everybody, and welcome. Deborah Lynn here in the studio. Oh, my hands are a mess. You guys are going to have to forgive me. Um, been busy making all kinds of fun art with Valentine's Day right around the corner, and I thought I would take you along on a journey and how to make these adorable little chipboard hearts, and I'm going to attach them all onto a long string, a continuous string of embroidery thread. So if you're wondering what kind of thread it is, I just showed you there two seconds ago. Um, I bought that pack at Hobby Lobby. Look at how cute these are. I bought a pack of that embroidery thread for, I don't know, $10, something like that. I'll drop all that in links, uh, or you can find a lot of this stuff within my Amazon shop. Anything from the Amazon shop, I do make a small commission, so if you use those links, I would appreciate it. It helps support my YouTube here. I also have a super thanks button uh, that if you'd like to help support my channel, you can also... Um, uh, do that by clicking on the thanks button. I've got some acrylic brushes that are coming out here. Um, I don't like to use, anytime I use acrylics, I don't want to use any of my watercolor brushes. I like to keep those separate. So here are some of the, wa um, some of the acrylics that I'm pulling out, just Liquitex Basics, fluid paints. I've got some golden fluid. Um, I'm just picking colors that are very Valentine, like pinks and whites and stuff like that. I'm also going to get some palette paper out here. If you don't know what palette paper is, um, I'll put the paints on the palette paper. These are from Jelly Arts. Um, they're just really, really cool tools to use for acrylics, for making texture. I guess you could use these tools even in watercolor to drag through certain things to make texture. Okay, palette paper. Where's my palette paper? I need my palette paper in order to move forward here. There it is. This is just Hobby Lobby's $5.99 palette paper. Stuff's fabulous. So if you use acrylics, this is awesome because when you're done, you just roll that paper up and throw it away. And you don't have to do any cleanup with anything on a tray or anything like that. That's the one thing that I don't like about acrylics is they're very messy. And man, that stuff's hard to get off your hands. Okay, so I've got three different pinks there and a white. And then that white, I can um, create um, different values of that those different pinks. And so a lot of this is going to be in the pinks and then I'm going to get some spray inks in here with that are kind of purple. And so this is this one's going to be pink and purple. Now when we do this, um, it doesn't need to be pretty in any way um, because I'm just making, basically, I'm just making a lot of texture, a lot of color, um, because all of this is going to be cut up. You're not going to be able to make sense of what it is when it's a, on a tiny little heart. And there's the paper punch at the top right. You can see it. I found mine at Michael's. You can find them in other craft stores. You can find them on Amazon. I'll try to see if I can find one comparable that um, I can put on my Amazon shop. If not, I'll drop the link to the one that you see there. And, um, and I want to do the same idea for Christmas. I want to see if I can find one of these paper punches as like a Christmas tree. But here's the one thing I want to tell you when you're looking for what paper punch you want. Make sure it's solid, like that heart is a solid shape, okay? So if I found a tree, I would just want a shape of a tree that's solid. If there's any die cuts in it, like a la kind of lacy look to it that has die cuts in it, that would make it very, very hard to build these up to make them into chipboards. So keep that in mind. You want it to be solid. 
Here you're just seeing me make lots of texture with my Jelly Arts um, tool. Okay, these little spatula tools are really, really fabulous. And um, if you have a studio or if you work with art a lot, they are definitely worth having because each side has got a different shape and um, very, very useful. And it doesn't have to be just acrylics that you use it. You could use it in your watercolor. You could use it in what whatever paints that you use, inks. Uh, you could even use it in, um, oh, what do I want to say? Um, alcohol inks also. Sky's the limit. The sky's the limit when it comes to art. And here's the thing. Oh, I'm using my special tool. This is not just a twig from a tree. This is not just one from you know, a hedge out front in my yard. This was from my sweetheart. He gave me a bunch of roses, long stem roses, and I just snipped off the heads and saved the stems and dried them out. It works perfect. They're nice and long and straight, and you could trim the tip of it to be real pointy or to be blunt however you want it to be and what it's nice when you work loose is to have a really long tool like that it helps you stay very loose so this is just delusion spray ink that's going down and I'm just uh, etching into it creating texture none of this has to make sense None. This looks like a hot mess and that's okay because it's going to have all that's going to be cut up into tiny little shapes. So you'll never know what it was in the, what it looked like in the beginning, like right now, unless you looked at the tutorial or you created your own sheet of paper. Now, if you wanted to make a really, really long, continuous, continuous bolt of this, I would suggest like this, getting a big piece of hot press watercolor paper and, and doing this on a big piece in big format, or getting a bunch, like six sheets of this paper and kind of taping the back and putting, making one large sheet, taping it all together with like painter's tape on the back and then painting it and then remove the painter's tape and then go in and cut everything up. Um, so that's an idea if you wanted to make a really long bolt of this or if you were gonna, you wanted to make garland for your tree, let's say, your Christmas tree and you wanted really long continuous piece, then that's the way to do it. Um, so that way your colorway stays the same. You're not making several different ones, but the colorway kind of changes. Um, so think about that if you wanted to do a larger run of this. But I just wanted to make a few small ones. First for you to show you how to do this. Second, for me, for Valentine's Day, to just wrap around maybe a bottle of wine I'm giving to somebody or maybe a piece of jewelry for my daughter, something like that, that I can just wrap the little box with it. So just the sky's the limit with what you can do. Okay, so now I'm just going to have to clean up here and go to the next step. Okay, everything's cleaned up. Now, the next step that's going to happen here is the chip. This, this is, I'm going to start making the centers for the chipboard. Okay, and this is just cardstock. I think this is 50 pounds. You can use 50 or 80, the higher the number the thicker the paper. So you'll have to, to determine how many you put in the middle that you sandwich into the middle of the two outside pieces. 
the two outside pieces would be painted okay and the inside is your cardstock that doesn't have anything painted on it okay this is just we're making like a little oreo cookie okay with the filling on the inside this is the filling throw that stuff away and just keep going around the sheet of paper and um keep cutting all those little white shapes you're going to need triple the i used three sheets on the inside three little um hearts on the inside and that that for my oreo cookie and so you have to have three times the amount so you have to do a lot of these plain white hearts And I try to use as much of that up as I can and release a bunch of the hearts from the underneath. And um, now this is going to be another one that I create. I'm going to be creating um, this one I'm going to use is um, going to be done with these tempera paints. I think I'm saying it right. This is just that inexpensive paint that a kid would use to make like, let's say school posters or something like that. The stuff dries like almost immediately. And uh, so it's perfect for this. You don't have to sit and let the art dry for a period of time before you punch it. Um, the stuff's going to be ready to uh, rock and roll real fast. So right now, what I'm doing is I'm just writing love, 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 love. This is not even going to show up. You're not going to be able to read the love. Um, but this is just putting some uh, black into the painting that I'm about ready to create. Okay, and I'm just using a Posca pen. If you don't have a Posca pen, you are missing out. These P O S C A Posca, they are fantastic. They're paint pens. Again, you will find these in my Amazon shop. I highly recommend these also. Um, and I've had mine for quite a while. I do need to get a, this is, I just have that small pack. I do need to get a bigger pack of Posca pens. Fantastic. Uh, love, love, love. And right now I'm using that tempera paint and I'm just kind of putting a little bit of color on all those little hearts that I made. Oh, that one I forgot to put a top on. Um, and... Now I'm just going to scribble some hot pink all over and look what I'm doing. I'm just taking my hand and making it more stained than what it previously was. <laughs> then you wonder why my hands are always so dirty. This is why. Um, I'm creating texture. I'm creating interest. So when these are cut up, you're going to see all those interesting textures and smears and uh, just it just makes it interesting. Now this is white. I'm layering the white on top of these colors. Again, it creates really cool color and what texture. And now a darker like red color. This is going all over. Again, just using colors for Valentine's Day. And now a lighter pink color. And back to the white. And this is their gold. It's actually very pretty. Um, and just kind of dragging that gold around. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay, so that sheet's done. And this one is almost ready here to be cut up. But while I'm waiting for that, 
I think what I'm going to do here is this one that's immediately dry, I'm just going to go in and cut this one up. And I do go along the perimeter. And you always got to remember to release those pieces from underneath. Otherwise, it really can get it can get really jammed up like right now. It, it got jammed on me. So I've got to get in there and loosen everything up and bang on it. Okay, here we go. Finally, they're coming loose. It's easy to forget about <laughs> the little hearts that are trapped underneath. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going around the perimeter. I know this gets a little boring here for just a few minutes. But um, it's part of the process. And look at how each one of them is different. And um, this is also something fun to do um, for making gift bags. Of course, you'd have to be less messy, but gift bags or cards, um, you know, using these kind of materials also for those things are, that's a lot of fun also. Releasing those hearts. And just cutting the edge off. Now, you could save that edge. And I did save a few of them um, and use that and lay it down on your paper and then spray over the top and use it as a, um, you know, like a, almost like a barrier. Can't come up with the right word in my head, what I want to say here. But I think I, I think you know what I mean. And I want to use as much of that paper as I can. I want to utilize every bit of it. So there's all my hearts that I created in that color color way. Okay, so then I have this one that I have to cut up. And this will be another color way that I do. And again, I'm just going to go around the whole perimeter of this and make a pile of these. And then I'm going to make a black and white one using a simic, um, is that how you say it? A, a simic writing where it's kind of sloppy and not legible. At the left, I started doing it where you could kind of understand what I was writing and I didn't like that. So I went to more of a, a more scribbly script and I actually, in comparison of when it was cut up, the one that was scribbly looked so much better than the one that was tighter and more formed and you could kind of read what was being written. So um, heads up on that, do the more scribbly one. Um, it looks prettier. So I'm just going to go around this whole thing and cut this one up and then I'll have three different sets of um, pieces that I can create this garland. Okay so now I have uh, my three different sets and now I'm going to grab my embroidery floss and I'm not going to separate, each floss has got like several strands within it. 
and when you embroider sometimes you only use two strands within it I'm going to use the whole strand okay so don't separate it and make it thinner it'll be too thin um, so I'm going to use the whole embroidery um, string okay and don't cut it okay until you're done so when you start you're going to want a little tail that doesn't have anything on it and then put your first heart and then space it maybe about five inches um, I'll show you that in a minute and then put a heart in the middle so right now I'm just picking the colors that I want um, and I'm going to do red with the black and white writing and then hot pink with that one and white with the more purple and pink. And I am making sure that my hands are clean. Um, it's going to get kind of messy here because we're going to be doing gluing. So make sure you have a hot towel or something to keep your hands clean or a baby wipe something um to always keep your hand because when the glue starts sticking and then you touch the paint it it can transfer so you want to keep that in mind and keep your hands clean through the process although mine don't look clean because they're completely stained with ink look at that <laughs> As I'm talking about it, I've got like, what the heck happened? And, oh, when I was rubbing my hands all over, smearing that tempera paint. I think that's what that was. Okay, so I have a front and a back. Those are my two painted pieces. And then I'm going to take three plain ones of the, um, the cardstock. And those will be in the center. I'm going to get my ruler out because when I measure my string as I move along, I measure five inches. But we'll get we'll get to that in just a minute. The camera's out of shot for just a minute. It will move here in a second. I didn't realize at the moment that I had moved the camera and it kind of threw off everything. But it'll come back into frame. So right now, continuous. Do not cut this. Just keep pulling that string as you go. Could you use yarn? Yeah, maybe if it was cotton yarn, I wouldn't use like acrylic. It might look kind of cheesy. Um, so here I have my front and one of my um, pieces of paper. And now I'm going to build another one. And I'm going to build up and make like an Oreo cookie. So I've got my outside and my back side, my two outsides, my front and my back, and then three plain ones in the center, okay? And I glue those all together. And then as I glue them together, I see how I form the edges. I kind of push it and squeeze it and make sure everything's lined up. I'm going to drop a link for this, um, also for this glue. It's fantastic. It, it dries fairly quick, and um, it only dispenses out a really fine amount. So it works perfect. So that'll be in the link. I measured out five inches, and then I laid that string down at about right in the center of that five. So at about two and a half, that was um, attached. And I do that throughout the entire process so it always looks consistent. And as you can see, I keep squeezing all that paper together and making sure everything is nicely glued together before I go on to the next chipboard. Outside, build my inside. And the other thing that I wanted to give you for a tip is when I put the glue down, so I form that, and then I'm going to put glue down um, for the string. Now this one, you'll watch this. I'm going to put the glue around the outside edge, put some in the middle, but then right where the string would go across, I kind of add there. 
I add extra right there. So there's just a little extra glue there to kind of hold that all in place and then sandwich it, squeeze it, form it, make sure everything's lined up. And if anything is wonky, you can always use your scissors and trim just a little bit if it, if it kind of didn't, uh, didn't sit right. But if you do this very carefully, um, it'll turn out really nice. So here I'm just blowing through a bunch of these. This took a little while. I've got this, of course, on high speed. I don't necessarily work this quick, um, but uh, this was the process. And there's just the black and white with red. So this was my small tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed these adorable, look at how cute they are. And each one is completely different from the other. And we used sloppy art to do it. And if you're a perfectionist, this might be a good one for you to do just to loosen up and just allow yourself to make a mess. Because look, a mess made these really precious sweethearts. Okay, you guys, it was fun. Until next time, stay safe out there in this crazy world. Stay well, and may God bless each and every one of you. Bye for now.